I was asked to provide more information on why we're using capacitors. Capacitors? With the regulators. And if you remember correctly, we had a regulator that had three pins. One was the, the in input. We had an output. We also had ground. And the ground, we had to connect a capacitor on one side and another capacitor on the other side. But to understand why these capacitors are needed, you really have to understand the source of the actual power. And in most cases, or in some cases, it will be from the from alternating currents or the AC, the power line. In the US, we have 120 volts of AC. And let's say this is time. I'll put a graph of how the, how the AC current is shown in a graph. This is the plus side. This is the minus side. So going down is, is negative, going up is positive. And our AC has a sine wave. And the sine wave, the AC ha goes into the positive region and then goes back down into the, into the negative region and goes back up into the positive region. And this happens 60 cycles per second. Or there are 60, it's 60 hertz or 60, um, 60 sine waves per second. And we, can, we obviously can't use this for DC. This is not direct current. Direct current would look like this. It would either be in the plus region or the minus region, and it would just be a straight line. But the most power supplies are not going to give you a perfectly straight line. It's going to give you a line something like this, and it will have little pulses, and they're, they're going to match, or they're going to correspond with the, the AC, the, the peaks of this. And this is caused actually by um, the first converting this waveform into another type of waveform by rectification or using bridge, re uh, bridge rectifier and then uh, using capacitors to try to smooth out the, the waveform. And this is how it works. With an AC-DC power supply, I'm going to show you a schematic. So you first start with the socket that comes out of the wall. And at this point, your waveform looks like this. This is actually plus and minus, and the waveform is pretty big. And then this wall socket goes straight to a transformer. And the schematic of a transformer is essentially one coil on one side, and on the other side, there's another coil. And this transformer changes the AC of, let's say, 120 volts, and it will either step it down or step it up in voltage. In this case, it, um, for wall adapters, I guess it would be stepping it down, but it's still AC, and maybe it's, let's say, 12 volts. And let's take a look at the what the the waveform would look like in this case. We're still in AC, but it's a smaller wave. And the top and bottom limits of this waveform matches the voltage that the transformer stepped it down to. We, we are trying to achieve DC, so what do we need to do with this waveform to be able to be DC? First of all, we know that the, the, the curve or the sine wave on the bottom of the minus, we don't, if we wanted a positive DC, we would want to sort of eliminate this, or we would want to fold this up on this side. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to create now a waveform that does this. And where this was, we're going to fold it up. And we want to try to get all of this energy and all of this power on the top end of this, this graph if we wanted a positive voltage. And the way you do that is using diodes. Or you can use a bridge re rectifier. But in diodes, you're doing essentially the same thing. You can either use four diodes or use one bridge rectifier. So let me talk about diodes for a moment. The diode symbol, and we've seen diodes before in our LEDs, because LEDs are diodes, and they share pretty much the same schematic symbol. The, the LEDs have a little bit of an arrow coming off of it showing there's it's emitting something or emitting light. And in the case of a diode, you're able to have current flow in only one direction. And the current in the diode, or going through the diode, can only travel in this direction. So to eliminate the waves on the bottom half, where you have a you only want the, the waves to be on the top and the plus side. To eliminate these waves, what you would do is you'd create a situation where you have the AC lines coming in. They're actually, the electron flow is actually in both directions because of the, the sine wave. 
So if you create a diode in opposite directions and have the load here, you would essentially be able to have the current going in this direction, but not in this direction. So you're getting the wave on this side and it's constantly, the circuit is constantly doing this. So you're able to get the plus, but when the movement of the electrons are in the other direction, since the AC is, is just doing this, it's constantly going back and forth, you're only getting the electrons that are going in that direction. So what you're doing is you're getting this side. But we need a way to be able to get the the electrons that are running in the other direction as well. So what we have to do is create what is called a bridge rectifier. You'll also notice that there's a time frame from this point to this point where we really don't have any current at all in this scenario. To be able to capture all of the current during both time frames, we're gonna have to create what is called a bridge rectifier. And it consists of four diodes. I'm going to color the DC lines a different color so it's easy to distinguish. So the DC lines will be green. And we're adding two more diodes in this location and in this location. So when current is in this direction, it's able to pass through only this diode because this diode will block the um, current and it will go into the DC circuit. Coming back, it will be able to go in both of these directions and then it will be able to travel back into the DC current, but it will also be able to return back into the AC. If the current is going in the other direction, it is able to follow this path because it will be blocked by this diode and then go into the DC circuit. It'll circle back and follow both this path and this path. And this path will allow it to go back into the DC circuit, but it'll also allow it to go back in and make a complete circuit for the AC current. I'm gonna draw both independently so you can understand the flow of the electrons in each scenario. So we have our two AC lines here. We have the other one down here. And we have our DC going out. So in the top one, we'll have the current flowing in this direction and the current flowing back in this direction. And in the top one, we'll have the, the current flowing in this direction from the bottom and then flowing back into this direction. On this side, we'll do the graphs. So this would be showing the this, this sine wave on the top, but not on the bottom. And this one will show the sine wave on the bottom and not on the top. And in this scenario, if the current is in going in this direction, we have a diode that will allow it to continue on in this direction. And it goes out to the DC current. And it will be, let's put an arrow there to show direction. I'm going to put in DC here. It's not actually direct current yet, but it'll get there. So when it completes this circuit, it'll be coming back and it'll go in this direction and return to AC, or it'll go back into this direction and then back into this circuit, going back into the DC. In this scenario, it is traveling in this direction, but it's not able to go into this diode because it's, it would be blocked by this diode, so it has to go into this direction and then it'll be passed into the DC. You can see the arrows the same direction on both of these, but they're in opposite directions in these. So when it passes through the circuit and it goes back in, it will be able to use this diode, and then it'll go through this diode and go back into the DC circuit. It'll also be able to go through this diode and, and return back to the AC. So you'll notice in both conditions, when the electrons are going in one direction or the electrons are going in the other direction, the DC, the electrons are going in the same direction on both conditions. So in this top one, the DC is capturing the waves on the top. And in this condition, the DC is capturing the waves on the bottom. But this is flipped around because it's in the same direction. So in actuality, the waves are on the top. 
So our final DC current looks like this. But this is not a perfect condition for DC because our thought of DC would be a straight line. And this would be the ideal current that we're looking for. A constant plus voltage, whatever voltage we're looking for, and not something that bounces to, to zero. So now back to our circuit diagram. Let's add our bridge rectifier. So we have our DC coming out from these points, and now we have this waveform at this point. Now we need to take some kind of device that in, le in electricity we can charge, we can charge up almost like a battery, we can use this um, current and charge up a capacitor in this case, and then allow the capacitor to discharge, and then the capacitor will charge up again with this current, and then it'll start to discharge. So we're going to add capacitors to the circuit. This would be the plus side of our circuit, and this would be the minus side. And we would add a capacitor between the minus and plus. This would be an electrolytic capacitor. And what happens is, I'm going to draw the graph above here, and I'm going to draw the, the sine wave a little bit higher so it can be understood what's happening. And let's just pretend this is the very first wave that this capacitor sees. So it's going to charge up, and then when it gets to the very top, it starts to discharge, but it dis discharges very slowly. And then, it's, and then it gets another wave, and it charges back up, and then it starts to discharge again. Catches another wave, and at the very top, it discharges, and then it catches another wave, and then it discharges. So now our wave has eliminated this portion, or now our circuit has eliminated this portion of the sine wave, and our current is actually way up here, but you can see it's still a little bumpy. So what if we added another capacitor? And we know that the wave looks something like this. Another capacitor is going to take this wave and smooth it out even more. And as a rule of thumb, the higher the capacitor value, the smoother your current is going to be, since it's able to store more energy. Now comes the regulator. Now the regulator, we have the voltage in, which is the DC in, this is the minus, and the voltage regulator is going to take this in one of its pins. And then we'll have this, uh, the, the ground on its middle pin, and then we'll have an output pin. Now, the interesting thing about regulators, they don't like a lot of ripple in, from the power supply. If they have too much ripple, the regulator will not function properly. So you will need this second capacitor, which will be a pretty high capacitor. And the ones that we're, we'll be using, 10 microfarads. This capacitor will be a lot larger, but this capacitor is generally dependent on the overall power supply components used and what voltages you're going to be using, uh, the current that's going to be needed. So we don't actually know what this particular capacitor would be. This would be a part of, let's say, the wall adapter or, or some other power supply that would be feeding our DC circuit. This is something that we would add to our circuit, which is the 10 UF, 10 microfarad capacitor, and this would be an electrolytic capacitor. And on the output, to continue this ground, one more thing to add about this particular capacitor is that we, w we want to remove as much ripple as possible, but the distance between zero volts and the bottom portion of this ripple is what we need to be concerned about with the regulator, because we need to be at least two volts above what the regulator requires. This portion right here, we can, we can um, have a power supply that has quite a few number of volts above the, the regulator, but if it's pretty close, um, if the output of the DC of this power supply is, is very close to the plus two volts, let's say this is um, a 7805 and it requires at least seven volts to power, to get um, a good five volts out of this, you would need the power supply to at least have seven volts to the lowest point at this point. Smoothing it out even more with this particular capacitor may allow this 
to average out between the top and the bottom. So you'll be able to get a good amount of voltage. It may not be in the very center, it may be a little bit lower than that, but it might clear that point. It may clear that lowest point, so you'll be able to get that voltage. Now the capacitor on the other side of the regulator, on this side of the regulator, is recommended by the manufacturer or the, the data sheets of the 7805 to be 0.1 UF or microfarad. And in the data sheet it specifies that this helps transient response. Transient response is probably something you'll never hear again, but it's essentially like the, the springing effect of a, of a current or voltage where you'll have it go up and down and then it comes back to equilibrium. It starts off large and then it, it eventually gets to a steady point and the 0.1 UF capacitor will help it get to that steady point. So this information is probably more than you will need for microcontrollers, but it's good to understand the workings of a power supply, how AC gets converted to DC, and, and the, the sine waves and how they are formed into DC throughout the circuit. Thanks for watching.